this lesson, we'll introduce the concept of the continuous random variable and its associated probability density function, and we'll examine a few of the most common probability distributions. Well, let's start by thinking about a random variable that we call x, which takes its values somewhere on the real line. Unlike a discrete random variable, this random variable takes its values for the entire real line, or from some subset that contains an uncountable number of elements. Now, for discrete random variables, we characterize the variables through the probabilities that they would take each value in their range. But because there's an uncountably infinite number of values in the range for a continuous random variable, the probability that it takes any particular value in its range is equal to zero. Instead, then, a continuous random variable is characterized by a probability distribution, and we'll represent that with a probability density function. And we'll typically represent that with the function f, with a subscript that represents the name or symbol for the random variable. Now, as we did with discrete random variables, we'll typically use uppercase symbols to denote the random variable, and we'll use lowercase symbols to denote the particular values that the random variable takes. Now, one of the primary ways we use a probability density function is to define the probability that a random variable takes a value over an interval. Here, for instance, is the way we'd use the probability density function to determine the probability that a continuous random variable takes a value between A and B. Now, because of this, a probability density must only take non-negative values to ensure that its integral over all possible regions is non-negative. And because the probability that a continuous random variable takes any particular value is equal to zero, whether or not we include equality on either end of the inequalities that defines this region is irrelevant for a continuous random variable. Now, if the region is disjoint, as shown here, we just integrate the density for the two regions and then sum the two probabilities. And we do the same if there were three or four or five or any number of regions. Also, the probability that the random variable takes a value that is within some region of width delta around a value a, well, in the limit of small delta, that'll be equal to the density evaluated at the value a times that width delta. Well, finally, if we evaluate the probability that the random variable takes any value at all, which we know must be equal to 1, then we can see that any probability density function must integrate to 1 over the entire real line. Now, the other primary role for a probability density function is to evaluate expected values for functions of a random variable. If, for instance, we have any function g of the random variable we're calling x, then we might ask about the expected value or the average value for that function of the random variable. Now, similar to the way that we evaluated expectations for discrete random variables, the expected value for a function of a continuous random variable is obtained by evaluating the function at every value in its range, and then multiplying that by the probability density evaluated at each value in the range, and then integrating over the range for the random variable. Now here we've shown the range for the integration as the entire real line, which will be okay because the probability density will take the value of zero for any places that are outside of the range. But in many situations, we'll explicitly define the integration limits to match the range for the random variable. Well, the expected value, or the mean for a continuous random variable, is obtained by multiplying the density by all values the random variable can take and in integrating over the range. The second moment, for a continuous random variable is obtained by multiplying the density by the square of all the values that the random variable can take and integrating over the range. And the variance is the second moment minus the mean squared. Well, here's an example of a random variable that's called a uniform random variable because its shape is uniform over the range for the random variable, which we've shown here is the interval from A to B. The expected value for a uniform random variable is the midpoint of the range. And the variance is the square of the width divided by 12, which results in the region about the mean plus or minus one standard deviation that we've shown here. An exponential random variable has a density that has an exponential shape over the range of non-negative numbers. And here the parameter mu is the mean.
and the variance turns out to be equal to the square of the mean, which results in a corresponding spread about the mean that we've shown here. A Laplacian distribution is a two-sided exponential distribution where the parameter mu is the mean and the parameter b determines the variance, which corresponds to a spread of plus or minus one standard deviation about the mean that we've shown here. Now one of the most important distributions is the Gaussian, or the normal distribution, which is parameterized by two parameters, mu and sigma, which, as might be expected, correspond to the mean and the standard deviation, with a spread about the mean that's shown here. Now these are some of the most commonly used distributions, but many more are possible. However, the way we use these distributions is always the same. Now here's an example of a random variable whose probability density is proportional to x squared over the interval from 0 to some value a. Now because the density must integrate to 1, this leading coefficient that I've called lowercase a turns out to need to be 3 over a cubed. Then we could use this density to determine that the mean for the random variable is 3 fourths of a, and the variance for the random variable is 3 over 80 times a squared, with the corresponding spread about the mean plus or minus one standard deviation that we've shown here. Well, in this lesson, we've introduced the concept of the probability density for a continuous random variable, and we showed how we use the density to evaluate interval probabilities and some simple expected values. In subsequent lessons, we'll look at each of these concepts in much more detail.